Welcome, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming today. Can everybody hear at the back? No? I'll try no. So people at the back go, what the hell is going on here? Um, I just wanted to begin with a few words to say uh, something that I actually quoted this morning on the anniversary of Blake's death. In 1826, um, visiting a friend, Blake wrote in the visitor's book, William Blake delights in the pleasure, the joys of good company. He was born in 1757 and has died many times since. <laughs> Blake's many, many deaths and many, many resurrections mean that more than any other poet, more than any other artist, he is one who has truly been revived and resurrected and lives again. The artist Christopher Bucklow said that there's a strange fact about Blakeheads, of which I very much consider myself one. On a personal level, I first properly encountered Blake when I was 19 years old. I'd been raised a very good Catholic boy, and I read The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. At that moment, the light bulbs went on, and they have never gone out since. But Christopher Bucklow said, he's an artist very much inspired by Blake's works. And he said that when you meet another Blakean, you're speaking to one of those few people who truly believes that Blake never died. Yeah. I'm a romanticist. I, I study the romantic period. But people do not speak about Wordsworth or Keats or Byron in the same way. Blake's vegetable body, as we've heard several times, may be buried several feet b before us today, but his true, eternal, visionary body never died. It has inspired more writers, more artists, more musicians, more thinkers than any other poet or painter or visionary Christian artist in the past. I would like today to share with you briefly one of my favourite poems. I've mentioned that I was raised a good Catholic boy. Um, depending on who I'm speaking to, I'm either an atheist or a religious believer just to mess with their brains. I'm a Blake in Spinozis. God is everywhere, which also means he's nowhere, and everything that lives is holy. In the divine image, Blake wrote, to mercy, pity, peace and love all pray in their distress, and to these virtues of delight return their thankfulness. For mercy, pity, peace, and love is God our Father dear. And mercy, pity, peace, and love is man his child and care. And I'll just conclude with the final stanza, which for me is incredibly important in these divided times. And all must love the human form in heathen Turk or Jew, where mercy, love, and pity dwell. Their God is dwelling too. Thank you all very much. Yeah. Yeah.